Hey folks, I'm going to try and do a uh, state space simulation example. I've got most of the skeleton code already written here just because it has nothing to do with the actual equations of motion. So I've imported numpy, matplotlib, uh, scipy.integrate, and I've created uh, spaces for the A and B matrices for state space, uh, a space for the derivatives routine, and then I've also put a space for uh, I've got my t out vector from 0 to 10 seconds, my initial condition vector. Um, here I'm going to run the integrator using the od int um, function. And then I'm going to plot everything. And you notice this is a, I'm going to do a two by two system. So I'm going to plot the first column and call it x1, and the second column and call it x2. Um, but I could easily do this for a three by three or four by four system. Um, so I'm going to do a, a spring mass damper system, so I'm going to make a, a 2D array. So the first row is going to be 0, 1, and the second row is going to be minus K over M, minus C over M, and then uh, that's it. Um, so I'm going to make C equal to 2 and uh, K equal to 10. I'll make the mass equal to 0 0.5. My B matrix, I'm going to make, uh, it's going to be 0, and then 1 over m. If uh, you write the equations of motion of a spring mass damper system, you'll see that. And I think I need two brackets on this. I might be wrong. Actually, I think I think I need to do, because you need to make it a column vector. So I think you need to do this. There you go. OK, and then in the derivatives routine, I'm going to do a step input. So I'm going to make the input just 1. And then um, x dot is just going to be I'm going to put this in comments. Um, x dot is a times x plus b times u. But the problem is, is that um, these are matrices. So you have to do uh, np dot matmol a comma x. And remember, x is the input, and it's a vector. And then you're just going to do plus b times u. And I'm really hoping that we're not going to run into crazy matrix dimension issues. Um, if we do, I'll have to look up some other code. Um, so my initial conditions, I'm just going to make it 0, 0. Um, so it's not moving and it's at the zero, but I'm applying a force to it. So it should move to whatever the DC gain is, which I guess in this case is what? One divided by M over K over M. So that's going to be, uh, the M's will cancel. So it'll be what? One tenth, I think. It should be one tenth. Let's, uh, let's see if that's right. So hopefully we won't get any matrix dimension issues. Uh, let's hit F5 here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, of course. The array turned by the function must be one dimensional. Is it? Okay, there's a couple things it could be. It could be this. No, that's not it. Um, let's print x dot here, and let's see if it if it came out properly. Okay, yes. Yeah, so something something got something got goofed up here. So let's let's print a. Let's print x. Let's print b. Um, let's see what's going on here because yeah, x dot should not be a 2 by 2. So let's see. So a is a 2 by 2. X is a, yeah, see, that's interesting. So x is a, maybe what we need to do is we need to do the same thing we did here where we make this a column vector. Let's see if that works. Oh, I didn't like it. Initial condition why not must be one dimensional. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to look up some other code that I've used here. Um, so I've, I've done the state space example before for a three by three. So I think I did it in this segue example, I, th I believe. Um, maybe not there. Maybe in here, invert pendulum. Yeah, there you go. So I got derivatives. Yeah, see, I've got derivative x and t. I've got np matmol a comma x. So I'm using, I'm doing the same thing. So where do I define the a matrix? So the a matrix is here. Okay, and I make it my columns and rows. Um. Oh, interesting. So b. B is actually not a column vector. Okay, so maybe that's what we—that's where we messed up. So let me get rid of. Let me get rid of this real quick. And let me make B instead of let me not make it a column vector. And 
let me run this and see. Oh, okay, great. That looks like that worked. So let me get rid of the print statement. Okay, and then um, it looks like it had too many values to unpack. So let me go back and just do X out here. And then, okay, great, there we go. So yeah, so the X coordinate went to 1 tenth, right? That was a DC gain. And then uh, here's X2. So this is obviously the velocity, and then this is the uh, step response output. So again, so your A matrix is here. Here's where you put in your A matrix, two by two. This is where you put in your B matrix, but in order to make sure that your matrix dimensions are right, you actually just need to make it a row vector. Um, and then uh, and then here you can do NP map all A times X plus B times U, and then you're good to go. Um, at this point, you can really do whatever you want. I mean, you could do three times sine, you know, sine three T, and you can actually like make it make it respond. And what's interesting about this spring mass damper system is that, you know, if you put in a constant input, you're going to get an output. But like, if I put in like, you know, 10 T, because this system is a, uh, because this system is like basically like a low pass filter, you know, as I put in a higher frequency, the amplitude is going to come down. So eventually, if I put in like 100 T, you know, I'm probably getting the aliasing in here. But if you zoom in, the, uh, yeah, I mean, like the output. X is like, yeah, I'm definitely getting into aliasing issues, but you know, my output is like super low. Um, that's a vibrations issue. Um, the, the other thing you can do is you could add feedback control. So you could do, you know, KP times X minus X command plus KD times X minus, oh shoot, you've got to do X1 is X of zero and X2. Actually, we can just do full state feedback, can't we? So we could do um, np.matmol k comma x, right? And then we could define k equals as array, let's see, k1, 0, um, 0, k2. And that would be a PID control. So the proportional gain, I'm going to make 10. And then the, the derivative gain, I'm going to make 5. And um, Oh, but wait, you it's 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 not it's x minus x command, isn't it? So we need to make an x command. So x command I'm gonna make not as as array. Uh, I want it to go to 10 and and no velocity. Let's see if that works. Uh, looks like it did or didn't. It's possible it freaked out. Maybe this needs to be negative. Uh, x command is this, x minus x command is this, oh, what's k, there's k, mp dot mat mol of uh, k times x, what would that, oh, x command, what would that give you, 100, uh, why, is, why is it giving me a 2d, I don't want that, because x command is a, and then k is a 2 by 2, Hmm. And multiplying matrices in Python is always really weird. I mean, that's where MATLAB kind of excels with the whole matrix laboratory thing. Um, I mean, I'd like to just blow this out, you know, I mean. I'm going to pause the video and come back, okay? Okay, so this is what I get for doing things on the fly. For some reason, I made k a two by two. Um, so if you recall, u is a is a one by one, and then uh, k is a is a question mark by question mark, and then you multiply that by x, which is a two by one, or x minus x command. So you need a one by one and a two by one. So obviously, if you want the inner products to work, this needs to be a one by two. And so I don't know why I made k a two by two. That was my fault. Uh, k was supposed to be a one by two. Um, so it really had nothing to do with uh, Python versus MATLAB and, and the matrix laboratory. It had everything to do with me just being incompetent, clearly. Um, and I guess that's what I get for uh, for coding this on the fly. Uh, but at least you saw my thought process here and like what I kind of did to, to work it out. Um,
what I actually did I off camera to figure this out was like I just ran like a couple of commands in the command prompt just like multiplying things I tried to do this reshape command and that didn't end up working and then and then I thought about it and I was like wait like isn't you supposed to be a one by one and so that was when I, I figured this out so anyway so if you run this um, and you set the command to 10 um, it only goes to 5 and the reason why is because you have a ton of steady state error so if you make K oh, that's X command shoot sorry so if you make uh, K1, right, like huge, right, if you increase KP, you'll increase the, the amount of oscillations, but you will also uh, reduce steady state error. Um, so if we zoom in on this, you see it's, it's got to like 9.2. So you would need to add integral gain if you wanted to completely get rid of uh, steady state error. But integral gain in state space is a completely separate video. So this video is already 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and just stop here. Um, I'm going to push this code to the cloud. Um, so you can read, you can read this. This is actually, if I go back to OBS, aren't I in the way? Let me move myself down here. Um, so yeah, so here's the, uh, here's where the code will be. So I'll go ahead and push that um, as soon as I'm, as soon as I'm done with this video. Uh, so just to recap, you have your A and your B matrix here. Your A is a two by two. Your B is a two by one. Your K matrix is a one by two. And if you notice like B and K, like you can't necessarily tell the difference, but when you do the matmol commands, like Python kind of figures that out and it looks like I must have I, I missed the minus sign here like there should be it should actually be XC minus X if you look at the control block diagram that's how it should be and then yeah everything looks right um, so then when you do your X dot you just do matmol a times X plus BU and then uh, there's T out X initial zero zero so we can make my initial conditions kind of weird so we could make our initial condition like like imagine if it's like traveling in the wrong direction you know, so there will be like a, actually it didn't even, it doesn't, it, the, the, the proportional gain so high, it doesn't even look like it mattered. It just like completely blew it up. But at least you can see the initial condition down here is negative 10. Um, and then uh, I plot it. So I plot the first column and the second column and that's X1 and X2. And then I do some labels, some legends and, and that's it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, good luck.